Skins on Monday Night Football. Al Michaels along with John Madden. John, I mentioned a moment ago that each team started out 1 0. We've known Parcells a long time. It's amazing to think only seven guys predated the Parcells era in Dallas. He's only been the head coach for a little bit more than two calendar years. He'll never tell you he's happy. He'll never tell you he's satisfied. But you know him very well. Is he a little happy and a little yeah, satisfied? I think I think he's a lot of happy because he told me the other day, he said, this is the best chance of winning that I've had since I've been here. And you know, when you talk to Bill Parcells about that, I know what he's talking about. He's talking about his defense. You know, he got he got some young players, he got bigger on defense, he got some better corners, and now he's playing that that three-man line. You know, that's what Bill Parcells is. Last year they were a four-man line, they went to a three-man line, and now this is a Bill Parcells team and a Bill Parcells defense. With Washington, we'll be talking about the quarterback switch all night long, but already they've gone from Patrick Ramsey to start the season to Mark Brunel as the new starter. Your thoughts on that? Well, you know, Patrick Ramsey was injured last week, and then Mark Brunel came in. And I think that Joe Gibbs just felt comfortable with Mark Brunel. Brunel felt comfortable, so Joe Gibbs said, that's the way that I'm going to go. I talked to Joe before the game, and he said, look, I don't want to blame Patrick Ramsey for our offensive problem. He said, I just want one of these guys to take over the job. That was one of the shortest leashes in history. To be continued. Back at Texas Stadium, our great pal and colleague Michelle Tafoya is now officially on maternity leave. She'll be giving birth to a bouncing baby boy in the next few weeks. And Michelle, we're thinking about you and we miss you. And filling in in Michelle's stead over the next few weeks will be Sam Ryan, who's done a lot of college football at ABC Sports. And Sam, we thought we would bring you in tonight because there is nary a touch of autumn on this 19th night of December, unless you're in a luxury suite. It gets better from here. Welcome, Sam. Doesn't get much hotter than this, Al. 92 degrees outside the stadium. But hey, it's 100 degrees inside. Now, the air, there is an open roof here, partially open. Air does not circulate in the stadium, nor do they pump in any air. Bill Parcells said when he was coaching the New York Giants, the heat was a concern here, more of a concern now that his Dallas Cowboys play here in this stadium. So expect the Cowboys to roll in a lot of players, especially on defense, Al. And they did that last week, Sam, with great effectiveness. If I, if I said December, John, I meant September, obviously. It's been a long season, but maybe it might feel like December, but it's it feels like There's the middle no of July right now. There's no way this feels anything like December, I'll <laughs> no, tell you that. Not at all. And in this stadium with the hole in the roof, there's no circulation in here. It's very still and very hot, obviously, as here we go. The end of week number two, Tyson Thompson, a great-looking rookie out of San Jose State, maybe the fastest guy on the team. Nick Novak just signed as a kicker because John Hall is hurt to put it in the air. And the Cowboys will take it from the seven-yard line. And the rookie, Tyson Thompson, who had his moments in preseason, brings it out to the third. That may be my favorite introduction. Al Johnson, Wisconsin. From the 30-yard line, here is Julius Jones. Picks up a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Defense held the Bears to one touchdown last week. Was one of the most potent in the NFL last year. Bledsoe, quick toss out to the right side. Caught by Terry Glenn. Glenn escaping a couple of would-be tackles and is tackled at the 39-yard line. Sean Springs was one guy who almost got him down, but couldn't. It'll be third and short. You know, one of the interesting matchups is going to be Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator of the Washington Redskins against Drew Bledsoe, who he, he, he played for when Greg Williams was a head coach of the Buffalo Bills. And, you know, and Drew says that he knows Greg Williams. He knows what he's going to do. And Greg Williams says, I knew, I know Drew Bledsoe, and I know what we have to do against him. That's the internal chess match tonight on third down and one. Bledsoe spent three years at Buffalo, two of those under Williams. And they're going to go to the air on play action, and that is caught by the tight end, Brett Pierce. The second tight end, and number one guy is Jason Witten. Actually, he'd be third behind Dan Campbell. So on third and one, a little fake to the back, and then a pass for a first down. I'll tell you, that was a great call. The Washington Redskins go into five defensive linemen. That's their short yardage. And then they bootleg, so they fake to the left. Drew Bledsoe comes out to the right. That fake of the run to the left took all the linebackers to that side and the five defensive linemen, and they were able to get out to this side. Pierce in his second season with the Cowboys, that's his first reception, first of his career from the 49-yard line on first down. Jones, game of three, and John, the thing with 
that play call is Sean Payton is going to call the plays for Dallas assistant head coach and the quarterbacks coach and there he is behind the cart. It had always been a sign of mystery with Parcells through the years who's calling the plays and he'd never give it up and then finally a couple of weeks ago he said Peyton's the guy he'll call the plays he does it better than I do yeah that's that's a part of it to surprise me is that Bill Parcells uh, admitted that, that Sean Payton is a better play caller and I think I think because that's all he has to do when you're the head coach you have to do everything else plus that on second and seven with four wide outs in this set the catch is made and that'll be enough for a first down as Terry Glenn makes his second catch and rolls out at about the 40 yard line that'll move the chains for Dallas. Greg Williams thinks that you spot rush him because he's always going to be in the pocket on a spot. Bill Parcells and Sean Payton are saying no we're not. And Drew doesn't have a lot of mobility has been sacked over 400 times in his career this time a conventional drop back great protection but the pass is too high and Glenn turns around and says give me a flag and there is a flag back up at the 28 yard line that's Wolf Harris who grabbed him at about the 28 yard line and the penalty will be on the left corner for Washington I think when Walt Harris illegal grabbed contact him. on the defense number 27 five yard penalty automatic first down I think that just threw the timing out because had he not grabbed him, that could have been a wide open play. Here he is. Here's Walt Harris right here. And you're going to see him come down. And that's a double move. He was going to go in and up. As he goes in, Harris starts to bite on it. Then as he goes up, he had to grab him or Glenn would have been wide open. Harris back in 96, Chicago's number one draft choice. So a first down at the 35 yard line. Opening drive of the game. And Bledsoe's going to take a timeout. Right in 674th game that would have been. Now that was some football, huh? Mm -hmm. Counting preseason, counting a lot of stuff. First and 10 from the 35 yard line. This is Julius Jones. To the 34 yard line Julius Jones was picked in the second round he played his college ball at Notre Dame his brother is Thomas Jones who had a big day for the Chicago Bears yesterday and had played with Arizona and Tampa Bay and the Cowboys liked him Parcells took a, a long look at him he was hurt the first part of last season but once he got healthy he was tremendous in the second half of the year including a fabulous Monday night game at Seattle in December. Well, how about a, a three-week period there where in three games he carried the ball over 30 times in each game? They found out about him in a hurry and, and, and carried with great effectiveness in those three games. Mom and Dad, Thomas and Betty are here. Well, how about proud parents? Wow. Huh? Well, Thomas Jones had the second-best rushing day in the league yesterday. Only Sean Alexander of the Seahawks rushed for more yardage. Third, third and six, and here's the blitz. And they give it to Jones, and they exploit that blitz as Julius takes it to the 21-yard line. Yeah, and that's a pretty good idea because Greg Williams knows that Drew Bledsoe is going to be in the pocket, or he thinks he's going to be in the pocket. So instead of rushing from the edges, he wants to rush up the middle. So what the Cowboys do is they let him rush off the, up the middle, and then they, they just wait off that inside and run the ball off tackle. And that was very costly as you watch the folks clapping from the stands because Pearson Prelo was the guy who was blitzing, and he has pulled up holding his hamstring. Pearson Prelo is the starting strong safety. He came over from Buffalo. Of course, that's part of that Greg Williams connection. Either pulls the hamstring or cramps up here, but he is on the bench, backed up by Matt Bowen. Right there, you see him grab it. Prelo came up the middle on the blitz, expecting pass, saw the run, went to react to it, and as he was reacting, he pulled something. Five receivers now, nobody in the backfield behind Bledsoe. He takes a toss from no one. And then throws to Peerless Price, another ex bill Those two played in Buffalo together. Then Price went to Atlanta, didn't do the job there. They let him go. And the Cowboys picked Price up a couple of weeks ago. He was inactive last week, but tonight sees some action catches his first pass as a Cowboy here. Yeah, and Bill Parcells was talking about how are we going to get uh, Price in the in the game, and this is one way. Now they have five receivers in an empty backfield, so as Bill Parcells was saying, the thing we have to worry about there is protection. So if you're worrying about protection, you throw that short 
quick pass. Price's first reception as a Dallas Cowboy is a one-yard loss. And that is slung out of bounds. Witten is over on the sideline, the closest receiver. And the Cowboys, who picked up four first downs on this drive, will now be facing a third and 11. And the Redskins have shown them every kind of defense. They've had a two-man line, a three-man line, a four-man line, a five-man line. They've blitzed inside. They've done everything to throw off the rhythm of the Cowboys. And this is really the first time that they've really done it because what they want to do is get them into this situation third and long. And this was when they can show them a variety of defense. Giants just scored before the half. It's 21-10. Giants at halftime over the Saints in the Meadowlands. And on third down and 11, that pass is behind Glenn. So a good start to the drive. Then they had to take a timeout to Parcells' consternation because they really had things going. The Redskins lose Prelo, but then they are able to stiffen and force Dallas into anything but a chip shot attempt here. It'll be about a 41-yard field goal attempt for Jose Cortez right and Drew Bledsoe had to get rid of that one because Sean Springs a corner was blitzing right up the middle free Tony Romo the backup quarterback to Bledsoe will do the whole thing this is a 41 yard attempt and it's over the top of the left upright and no good and now Mark Brunel the longtime Jacksonville Jaguar quarterback came to Washington Last year in a trade, started the year behind Patrick Ramsey, took over when Ramsey got hurt last week, and it's his job now as Clinton Portis picks up three to the 34. I wonder if Donna Shalala knows the new name of that school is the U. University of Miami, second down and six, and this is Portis to the outside, and he gets taken down by the neck. Henry had a big game last week against San Diego picked him up after he had been a Cleveland Brown over the last few years and Brunel then throws and the pass is caught by Gene Slash as they convert on the third and two get it down to the Dallas 43 yard line Terrence Newman with the coverage on the play. Yeah, there's a guy Joe Gibbs has a lot of confidence in and probably Mark Brunel also is James Thrash and in fact, his nickname is Full Go. I mean, he's one of those guys that, you know, practice game, he only knows one way, and it's Full Go. Here you're going to see him. He's in motion, comes out to the outside. They run an inside cut to the H-back, and he runs the outside cut right there. He Eight. came in motion from left to right. 18-yard gain. The ball is at the 43-yard line. Chris Tooley was a man in motion. John, H-back is a term that's coming back into vogue. We were talking to Joe Gibbs. He kind of created that situation last night though he gives some of the credit to, to I think to Don Coriel exactly define the an H back well it's really the second tight end that does all the movement usually isn't on the line of scrimmage you have a a tight end then you have an H back now you take Cooley as the H back and he can line up at tight end he can line up in as a slot he can line up in the backfield he can line up in a wing but it's to balance your offense Second down and nine. Brunel under pressure gets it away, and that is caught by the tight end Robert Royal, who stopped a yard shy of the first down. And Roy Williams on the safety blitz leveled Brunel as he got it away. Yeah, you look over there. That's the old Redskin thing to bunch right. Look at him. They have everything over here. This is where their receivers are. Here comes Roy Williams to that side because they know they're getting a bunch release. Mark Brunel was looking to throw that way. So even though he's a left hander, that becomes his front side. Third down and one from the 34 yard line. And it's flipped back to Clinton Portis, and he will get the first down as he takes it to the 30 yard line. I'll guarantee you that wasn't a play. Uh -huh. That was a foul up play. I have no idea what the heck it was, but Mark Brunel did a pretty good job with it. And of course, Clinton Portis did because he gets a first down. You see, he kind of fumbled the handoff there. Then, then I think he was probably supposed to flip it out there, and then it was too late, so he just threw it out. Watch him, he kind of fumbles it, goes to the left, and said, I have to get that ball out of my hands and get it in Clinton Portis's hands. And Leroy Glover was diving over the center. Now Liddell Best comes into the game in the backfield. We're now throwing for the end zone, and it 
is knocked down at the last moment by Anthony Henry. The ball floated. Santana Moss had gotten position. He'd gotten behind Henry, but Henry is there to break it up, and that will be Brunel's first incomplete pass. Yeah, it, it, it looked like he was going to get Anthony Henry. He gives him a pump, and right here, Santana Moss has him by a couple steps. Brunel just throws that one a little short. Had he gotten that one out there, a good pump. Now had he put a little more on it, gotten it out there a little more, that would have been a touchdown. Second and ten from the 29-yard line. Brunel, who used to run with great effectiveness, this time is forced to run and is out of bounds. In fact, Brunel leading the league in passing yardage and in rushing yardage for quarterbacks back in 96. And, and you always played Mark uh, Brunel a lot like they play Michael Vick now. You always played him to run to the left because usually the running game would be to the right and then he would bootleg or play action to the left. Third down and eight. This drive started at the Washington 31 yard line. Brunel out of the shotgun. A formation Washington did not use at all. And maybe that's one of the reasons. Brunel loves the shotgun, but that win was able to blitz. They did not run a single play out of the shotgun last year, and their first play this year is that. You see, it was not only a, a, a blitz, but it was a stunt. You're going to see that win come around in the outside. See, he starts in the middle. Now watch him come in the outside. The back picks up the inside guy, and no one picks up that win. You know, Mark Brunel can't be looking at a stunt in front of him. He has to be looking upfield. 12-yard sack. That forces a punt instead of a long field goal. Andy Groom, first-year player out of Ohio State, took over when Tom Tuchel was hurt in training camp. And he was dead in that one at about the 12-yard line. They'll down it at the 14. From the 14-yard line, Dallas begins this drive with 425 left in the period. Julius Jones swings to the outside, breaks a tackle, and then picks up nine yards. Lamar Marshall couldn't get him down in the backfield. Let's get a report on Prelo as we go down to Sam Ryan. Well, Al, you mentioned Prelo played for Greg Williams in Buffalo. This is his first year with the Washington Redskins, and he's already out of the game. The news is not good for him. He has a pulled right hamstring. That was suffered on the first Dallas series. After he pulled it, you could see he grabbed his leg almost as, he, as he, if he knew right away. They are icing it right now, but the word is that he is done for the game, Al. So Prelo finished. That means Matt Bowen will see most of the action at strong safety. Number 41, it's second down and short here. And they give it to Jones, who can move to the outside. He can take it through the inside. He can catch passes. And, you know, you're never going to make a guy a star after a half season, but it, you're looking at a guy who you think is an emerging star. He's right there. Well, and then when you meet him, you really like him. I mean, he's one of those bright-eyed guys, you know, always has a bounce in his walk, and, you know, he's happy. And, and he just looks like a guy that is very, very anxious to please Bill Parcells. And tonight, if he can gain 88 yards rushing, he'll go over 1,000 for his first 10 games. We'll show you in a little while. That is a very elite and illustrious company if he joins that fraternity. Takes a swing pass here, and that's a great open field tackle. Walt Harris coming up and saying, hey, kid, you know, you're in your second year. I'm in my 10th. I've seen that move before. You know, and that's one of the things that the Cowboys are trying to do more with Julius Jones is get him involved in the passing game. And, and you know, because last year was just kind of running. If they were going to throw the ball, they would throw it to other guys. But they want him to be the running back and pass receiver. And have you noticed that there hasn't been a fullback in there for the Cowboys? They don't have one active. No, they don't have one active. That's the reason they, they have tight ends have been back there. Jason Witten has been in the backfield and Dan Campbell has been back there. Now, of course, they just have one back. That's a trend that may become league wide over the next couple of years. On second down and 12. Short carry for Jones. We're talking about Julius and if he can gain 88 tonight. Take a look at this. Those are the guys who have gained a thousand yards in their first 10 games. Only four of them. Dickerson. Rodgers, Edger and James, Otis Anderson. That's good company. So what it proves in a way is that if you do that, you're not a flash in the pan. Each of those guys with great careers, and of course James still going. You know, the other thing that it proves is probably the easiest position 
to come in and adapt to is running the ball in the NFL. Double slot to the right, shotgun here. Bledsoe third down and eight, throws over the middle, and that's caught, but shy of the first down as Sean Springs made sure Jason Witten doesn't get the first down, and Dallas is forced to punt. Yeah, that's one thing that, that really impresses me with these Washington Redskin corners is that they're good tacklers. On the play before, we saw Walt Harris make a, a good open field tackle, and then on that one, Sean Springs make a good open field tackle, and that's, you know, they talk about cover corners, and I remember you know, someone said, yeah, if you're going to be a cover corner, the first thing you have to do is cover the run. And there's a lot of truth in that. And these two corners do play the run very well. Cover everything. Matt McBriar. Almost gave it. There's Collins ball in Hawaii. Gets that one away. And it's fielded inside the 25-yard line by Thrash. First and 10. Redskins at the 36. Scoreless first quarter. And we begin here with Clinton Portis going absolutely nowhere, running into Jason Ferguson, picked up, used to play with the Jets, played for Parcells there, and Ferguson, the nose tackle, is right there to make the stop. Well, you know, we talked about how they're, they're, they're putting in deep, different defensive guys. Here's Ferguson right here. He comes in with two rookie defensive ends, and, and he is a bigger, stronger guy than Roy Glover. He is a guy that can really handle that run. Now here's another guy who's pretty good against everything. That's 94, DeMarcus Ware. Drafted Ware out of Troy in the first round. We have full start here against Full start Washington. offense, number 47. Five-yard penalty, still second down. That's Chris Cooley. Bill Parcells talking about rolling in, rotating his defensive line, exactly what he's doing. He did in San Diego last week. And it's really essential to do it on a night when the, the temperature is more. It was up to 99 in Irving today, and right now it's down to the low 90s. Right, you saw number 99. That's that's Chris Canty. He is going to be a good one. And the other end is Marcus Spears, 96. Second and 16. Here's Brunel out of the shotgun. Swings it to the outside. It's intercepted by Newman at the 40-yard line. And Newman will set Dallas up in great field position at the beginning of the second quarter because that's the play that ends the first period. Terrence Newman picking off that pass that ended the first period and as the teams change ends here the ball is at the 31 yard line of the Redskins. Anthony Thomas has come into the game as the running back Julius Jones will get a breather here. And the ex Chicago Bear goes nowhere loses a yard yard and a half tackled by Marcus Washington back to the pick we go. You know, I mean, first thing Mark Brunel has a bad read here because you're going to see Terrence Newman is up in a cover two as a corner. James Thrash is a slot and he's going to run it out. I think Brunel thinks that Newman comes with the inside guy. You see he starts and then he has that short outside because Keith Davis the safety is over the top so he can play aggressively on anything and everything underneath. Mark Brunel did not read that cover. You said Patrick Ramsey the man that Brunel supplanted on the left. Back the pass goes Bledsoe, swings it out here to Thomas, and Thomas gets taken down at the 32-yard line. When he did get hurt in 2001, that opened the door in New England for Tom Brady, and you know the rest. And it opened the door for Bledsoe to leave. He spent three years in Buffalo. They let him go, and now he gets reunited with Parcells, and this is 13th year in the league here in Dallas. Out of the shotgun. Bledsoe throws, and that's caught for a first down by Keyshawn Johnson coming off a big game against the Chargers last Sunday. You see what they did is they got in shotgun. Now, Bill Parcells knows. That's the first thing he told me. He said, if, if Bledsoe's going to have any success, we have to protect him. Okay, you put him in shotgun, and you have two personal protectors right back there. That, that gives him time that, that he can not only look, but he can step up. And if you let him see the field and you let him have clean feet, he'll do this to you all night. 16-yard gain. The ball is at the 15-yard line. Bledsoe has started 8 of 10 for 43 yards. The fake to Thomas. That buys time. Then Bledsoe has to throw underneath and goes back to Thomas, who takes it to the 11-yard line, about five shy of the first. Warwick Coleman, the linebacker, 57, makes the stop. You know, if there's been any any problem with Drew Bledsoe over the years, it's that you know he's a real tough guy, and, and he'll he'll he's a pocket passer, and he'll hang in that pocket, 
and sometimes he holds the ball a little too long and and I know the coaches are always saying get rid of it get the ball out of there don't hold the ball and but he still wants to make that completion and hold it as long as he can to get a completion last week as you saw they were perfect four touchdowns on four trips into the red zone they're in the red zone right now and they give the ball to Thomas again he takes it to the 10 that's going to set up a third and four Marcus Washington in on the stop. Yeah, I'm really impressed with the way the Cowboys are calling the plays tonight. Sean Payton really has a great mixture because you know Greg Williams is one of these guys that wants to get you in long yardage and then come after you. Sean Payton hasn't let him do that. You know, and then when he's going to pass, he's given him maximum protection and he hasn't let him you know, he hasn't let him get to Drew Bledsoe. And great balance so far. Dallas 10 runs, 11 passes. They've already run 21 plays. And we're only 18 minutes into the game. This is a time they like to go to Keyshawn Johnson. Ooh, he was looking at him too. And a whistle before the snap on third down and four as he looked that way. I think Keyshawn Johnson was going to run, a, start run the an offense, option. Number 62. Five yard penalty still third down. Marco Rivera formerly with Green Bay and they picked him up in the offseason big acquisition for Parcells. You know I think the closer you get to the goal line the more effective Keyshawn Johnson is because he doesn't have to be wide open and you see Bledsoe was looking out there There's only one receiver out there to the left and Keyshawn Johnson was running a type of an option. Now they have a different pattern. This is one where they have four wide receivers one tight end empty backfield. On third down and nine from the 15 yard line. And Bledsoe throwing too far for Keyshawn Johnson. But you know, it's funny, John, you, you look at the way Dallas has run things tonight, and you can tell it's a different type of play calling, and maybe you do go back to Sean Payton giving them a different look from a Parcells team. Well, that's I think that's the reason that he's calling these plays, too, because he, he does have a different thing. And this is what you try to do to Keyshawn Johnson. You just try and get him in the back of the end zone and get a jump ball. But you know, you always scout the play call. You know, years ago it used to be a scout the quarterback and his tendencies, and then it became whoever the play caller is, you now scout him and his tendencies. 33 yard attempt for Jose Cortez. Retired tonight. Their names will be put up in the ring of honor. The triplets. It's their night in Irving. Liddell Betts to run this kickoff back. And the number two running back behind Clinton Portis takes you to the 20. Mark Brunel, the quarterback of the 28 yard line. Brunel starting last week and the season is number two and then ascending to number one. Here's Portis to the outside. And now here they are matched up again. And as we mentioned earlier, Patrick Ramsey started last week. He was the starter. He got hurt. They brought Brunel into the game. Ramsey was cleared to play, but Joe Gibbs said, you know what, I'm making my quarterback switch right now in the middle of the first game of the season. No game here, and it will be third down and three. <laughs> you know, John, there are short leashes, but I'm inclined to think that Joe must have spent a lot of the offseason thinking after he named Ramsey the starter way back last winter, did I do the right thing? And I always say when you when you think you have two, that means you don't have any because you don't know who your starter is. And you know, as he said, this isn't finished yet. I mean, he wants one of these guys to, to step up and, and play like an NFL quarterback and take the reins in this thing. Third down and three out of the shotgun. Brunel stepping up, fires, tip, incomplete, three and out. David Patton, the intended receiver, he was covered there by Anthony Henry, and Brunel has started the game two out of five for 26 yards. You know, you know what was an interesting thing on those last two plays? The, the Dallas Cowboys went into a four-man line. Here's the coverage out here, but we talked about how they're a three-man line. And remember when New England did that? They jumped into that four-man line to stop the run? Well, that's what they did on second down. Then they stayed with it on third, and that's why they stuffed that second down run. Belichick and Parcells. Andy Groom to punt. Field at 26 yard line. This is Patrick Creighton, Dallas's number three wide receiver. Running back punch takes it to the 35 yard line with nine and a half to go. Julius Jones, after getting a break on the last series when Anthony Thomas came in as the running back, is back in the game. So Jones sets up. Fake to him. Let's 
Well, when you get that much room, you're compelled to run. He takes it to the 40. Let's go to Sam Ryan. Al, you've been talking about Drew Bledsoe and Mark Brunel, both part of that 93 draft class. Well, their history is a little interesting. Drew was telling me Mark was the host on his recruiting trip to the University of Washington. When I asked Mark about it, he told me, hey, I didn't want to show Drew a good time. I didn't want to see some young star coming in here and taking my job. He said he tried to convince him to stay in his hotel room. Well, Alan John, it worked because Drew went to Washington State, as we know. And the two of them, of course, uh, Washington, Washington State, great rivals meeting in college. The ball is at the 40 yard line on second down and five. They give it to Julius Jones. And Jones is a little short of the first down. They stop him uh, just shy of the marker as Joe Salavea makes the tackle. It'll be third down and a short one. That's bad coaching when you when you have a quarterback coming in to visit and you let the other quarterback be the host. You never do that. You let some old lineman or something do it. <laughs> You know, who, you know who's playing well on this Cowboy team is is Rob Petit. You know he's a, he's a rookie right tackle, and I think that the the pass protection and the run blocking these Cowboys in the first half has been excellent. He's a rookie out of Pittsburgh. There was a big story in training camp. I thought Jacob Rogers would be the guy, and he winds up on injured reserve. And Petit, the rookie from Pitt, takes over, and that's a great tackle in the backfield by Lamar Marshall, who's a pretty underrated linebacker. He's in his fourth year. At a Michigan State, Antonio Pierce had uh, been the guy in the middle for Greg Williams last year, and he winds up with the Giants, and Marshall comes off a good game last week against Chicago. Yeah, you're going to see Marshall right here, and sometimes you just go laterally, but whenever you see a hole, you just run into that hole. Now watch Marshall. He comes there, and instead of staying laterally, he finds that hole, and he just runs right into it, and that's how you throw it back for a loss. So on third and one they can't convert fourth down James Thrash goes back to receive the punt off the foot of Matt McBriar who can really boom them. This one is an angled kick and it's going to be a very good kick even though it takes a backward hop it's down by Reeves at the 10 yard line. The Cowboys have won 14 of the last 15 meetings between these two teams 7 12 to go in the first half and we start with. Portis picking up a couple out to the 12-yard line. Look at number 76 there, Al. John Jansen. Now, that's something I don't know that I've ever heard of, a guy with two broken thumbs. So he's playing with a cast on each hand, and they made a, a special cast where just his thumb is in the cast, so he has each four fingers free so he can still hold. You see that? The, the, the thumb is in the cast, but he can still grab with those four fingers. You've heard about a guy who's all thumbs. Here's a guy who's no thumbs. Brunel to the outside. That's caught. A little short of the first down. Royal gets bounced out of bounds. Two thumbs down. Two thumbs up. John and I will be here all week. We're just going to play in the lounge. <laughs> not, the, not the main room. <laughs> but, but you know, it really is tough. I mean, it's tough enough, you know, to pass protect and to pick up guys and you know, and to get out there and practice, and then you break the thumb and. and I mean, it hurts, but it's a distraction. And then you break another thumb, and then you double your distraction, but you still have to block your guy, pick up blitzes, do all these things. They're rotating their defensive linemen against you, but you have to play. And he's back after a torn Achilles suffered in the first preseason game last year. And Brunel converts on third down, hitting James Thrash. Short pass there, but enough for a first down. First and ten, here's Sam again. Hello, you were talking about those casts that John Jansen is wearing on both of those thumbs. These are carbon fiber casts. They're really lightweight. He told me they took molds of his hands last week on Tuesday, the position that he wanted his hands during the games. His wrists and thumbs are supported, yet he does have movement of those other four fingers in each hand. The cast, he didn't get them till Friday. The one thing he told me is difficult to do outside of football, tying his shoes. Think about that. He said he's all fingers. Man, are those bizarre looking from the 22-yard line. Short pass over the middle. It's caught by Clinton Portis. It's a gain of about five to the 27. Joe Gibbs comes back to coaching. John and I, of course, we talked about this a lot last year. 64 years old, coached 12 years, retired for 11, though he stayed very active, running a, a tremendous NASCAR operation. And then he comes back last year, and of course, the town was just electric when it was announced that Joe Gibbs was coming back. I asked Joe last night how was that first year and he said well it was real good six times <laughs> not very good the other ten 
you know, and that's what it is. You know, when, when you've been coaching as long as Joe Gibbs has and Bill Parcells and, you know, Joe Gibbs is in the Hall of Fame and, and you know, you win so much that you really expect to win. So when you win, that's what you're supposed to do. And, and you don't really get the high of winning. But the loss of losing, because you don't expect to lose, and then you lose, I mean, that just eats your guts up. Yeah, and that's what Parcell said. He said winning's about the same, but when we were talking to Bill a couple of weeks ago in Seattle, he says losing's worse than ever. Yeah, and and winning winning is kind of lessened, I think. I mean, I, I don't think the wins are as big. Brunel throws a little high. Gibbs, by the way, told us last night that he's going to be a grandfather again. That will be seven grandchildren for Joe. So we asked him, so what do they call you? They call you grandpa, they call you gramps, they call you pop pop. You know what they call them? Coach. I think when you're a Hall of Fame coach, that's the first Holy words out offense. of a baby's mouth. <laughs> Number 66, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. Derek Dockery. I don't know how that can be the first thing that they, I mean, it, it's always like pot or, or something that has to do with that, but coach, Joe Gibbs. That's what they call him. Three Super Bowl titles. Well, these two rookie defensive ends again in for the Cowboys. That's, Bill Parcells has 22 players active on defense tonight because he wants to roll them. First and 20 after the penalty. Ball inside and paying the price. Santana Moss. They got him from the Jets. Lavernius Coles have been with Washington. And they sent Coles back to the Jets and got Moss. And they think Moss can make some big plays, but not here. The big play was made by Dat Wynn. And that was a wide receiver screen is what it was. You see Moss out here. See, he starts up, then he comes back. Then you, then, then you get your H back and your tackle out there to block for him. But Dat Wynn blew the whole thing up before the screen was able to develop. So Moss's first catch of the night is a one-yard loss, second and 21. Very fast first half, 345 to go. Liddell Betts is in as the running back. They send him out into the pattern, and Brunel will go to him on the sideline. He gets taken out by Anthony Henry up at the 28-yard line, and that will set up a third down and 15. You know, one of the one of the new young players for this Cowboys that is really going to be a good one is Demarcus Ware, number 94 there, because he can use his hands and feet at the same time, and you know, you know, not have to stop to use his hands. But on that one there, Chris Samuels did a good job of blocking him. But Demarcus Ware, I mean, he's going to be the Lawrence Taylor type of guy in Bill Parcells' defense. What a great fit he figures to be. Played his college football at Troy in Alabama. There he is. He gets picked up by Betts. But Brunel is going to get sacked anyway from the other side because you've got Greg Ellis coming in, the first guy to hit him. And then Marcus Spears, who was the other first round draft choice, in addition to where the second guy to hit him. You know, and I think that's that's the reason that Bill Parcells is so happy. You know, we talked about, you know, you know it's, it's his defense, it's his guys. He has young guys, and we and we see Demarcus Ware come from the outside, and right inside of him is Marcus Spears. These guys are going to just improve and get better and better and better and be good for a long time. So it's fourth and 26 as Groom comes into punt, and that's out of bounds. From the 37-yard line, 242 to the half, the Cowboys begin. Remember when that used to be illegal when the quarterback put his hands underneath, he couldn't bring them out? Right. Like so, throws. And Jones makes the catch, but smelling that one out perfectly is Marcus Washington, the former Colt, six year now out of Auburn. He had a big year last year for the Redskins. In fact, he was the only Redskin player to play in the Pro Bowl. No huddle here. First time tonight that Dallas has attempted this. They have the two-minute warning plus two timeouts. Second down and six. And that stretch play. And Jones, as he turns it back upfield, gets taken down there by Cornelius Griffin. And that's going to take us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes to go. Two timeouts for Dallas. Third down and three. Third down and three. And they come up with Terry Glenn set in the backfield. Stack two receivers to the left. And Bledsoe's going to swing it out for Glenn. And then Glenn falls down and loses the ball. And it's a live ball. 
No. Incomplete. Walt Harris was there, and Glenn never had control. Coming in, headlines and ruling incomplete. Yeah, that was a screen pass they were trying to throw to him. And I think when you put Terry Glenn in the backfield, you better watch him because you know he's not going to run it, and you know that he's not going to be back there as a blocker. But it was a screen pass, and you see Marco Rivera is out there to lead him. Ooh, well, I'll tell know. you something, John. I think he had possession of this. And in the last two minutes. Oh, he did have possession. Yeah. Of oh, he did. But then did the ball come out after his knee went down? Big, big break right there because Dallas is able to punt instead of losing the football. And the Friars kick just does go into the end zone. Washington will have it at the 20 yard line. So the Redskins, who will have an off week next week. Meanwhile, the Cowboys are going to go west. They're going to play back to back games in the Bay Area at San Francisco and then at Oakland the following week. Mark Brunel, Clinton Portis right there. Clinton Portis started his career with Denver and the report from the replay booth. And again, they have to initiate it in the final two minutes of either half. You can't be challenged by the coaches. And they said upstairs, at least the report we get, is that he did not have possession. I thought it was very close. Isn't this a, a fast a fast first half and that as quick as it can be there have only been four total penalties right and six incomplete passes right and 24 runs I mean you know both of these teams feel that they have to run the ball or establish a run Brunel out of the shotgun and that pass is caught on the outside and it's caught there by Clinton Portis and he gets tackled and of course we mentioned before that Joe Gibbs did not employ the shotgun one time last year but we were talking to Mark Brunel last night he said I love it yeah I asked Joe Gibbs what made him change and he said because on offense we stunk last year <laughs> that'll do it and he scored 15 points a game second worst in the league to Chicago and that's Marcus Spears making the tackle here a little short of the first down it's third and one they haven't smelled real good on offense this year they have all three timeouts they have only 62 total yards in the half third and inches and that'll convert Brunel himself will take it up to the 32 yard line and we're under a minute and they will take their first time out Jerry Jones is uh, very active in anything that goes on in the NFL and, and for the good I mean he is good for the league and you're wondering what he's down on the field at the end of the first half. remember they have the halftime ceremony with Aikman and Irvin and Emmett Smith and you've got a whistle here for a full start before the snap and you wonder when they're going full to start off number one. 60. Five yard penalty still first down a deep one to Santana Moss. I mean that's that's the reason they got Santana Moss and Joe Gibbs was talking about that. You know that we didn't get any big plays. We need a big play guy and I think well to get a big play out of a big play guy you have to try it and I think they threw him a screen pass. Or whatever. I mean so, somewhere I think I think they have to take a couple shots to Santana Moss. He's at the bottom of the screen. Covered by Aaron Glenn. Instead, they stick to the ground on first and 15, and it's Portis taking it up to the 32 yard line. You know, both of these teams are, are almost scared to death of long yardage, you know, because they know that's when they're going to get, you know, the heavy pass rush and the blitzes and the nickel defense and those kinds of things. So they're trying to stay in manageable down and distance. Second and 11, Brunel, who last year started as the starter, going deep, and that is knocked away, intended for David Patton, the ex Patriot. By Anthony Henry and Anthony Henry the ex Brown you've got a holding call meanwhile back in the backfield a holding call against the Washington Redskins and yeah, we talked about additions to this Cowboy team and you know and the holding young guys offense and number 61 10 yard penalty still second down they see Robach the center I was saying the young guys the the defensive line the linebackers but I'll tell you this Anthony Henry is a real positive addition because they were a little weak at that corner last year and I think that that caused a lot of other weaknesses now because of him I think they can get their safeties closer to the line of scrimmage. I mean he made plays like this against the Chargers all day. Second and 21. 24 seconds and two timeouts. And they're going to be content to go down by three and into the locker room as they give it to Liddell Betts who takes it up to the 27 yard line. You know you don't know if we're seeing here in this first half if we're seeing great defense or just conservative offense. 
little of both maybe. Yeah I think I, think, I mean the the tackling has been excellent. I Dallas. think the play calling has been a little conservative especially on the Redskins side. Dallas took that time out they have a chance to get the ball back. Then midway through the season they went to Ramsey Then they started this year with Ramsey and our good pal in the great with Tony Kornheiser had a great column last week the last line of which was talking about the quarterbacks which he said welcome to last year. And someone else said if Brunel is the answer what's the question. What's the question? And Beck just fumbles the ball and Dallas has it and that's Keith Davis with nine seconds on the clock at the 35 yard line. So they're not quite but almost in field goal range right now as the Dallas Cowboys come back with a chance to add to that three point lead. You know that's why you need a safety like Roy Williams who's going to give you big plays like this. I mean when he hits you everything is going to be flying including the ball. I mean he is he is something special. I mean not only does he he feel it and read it but then he gets up there and does something about it. So now Dallas has to try to get a little closer and stop the clock. They do have a timeout. Right now you'll be looking at about a 53 yard field goal pretty much out of Cortez's range. So they need a few yards and a clock stoppage. I think like a 10 yard play would be a perfect thing here just like this. That's about what they're looking for but it's incomplete intended for Keyshawn Johnson and now you're down to six seconds. And now you need a fast 10. I mean a real fast. Well 10. you can do the same thing because that one took what three seconds it was nine and now it's six. So if you did the same type of rhythm and timing you would still have three seconds left. That's what Bill Parcells is thinking. Second down and 10 at the 36 yard line three nothing Dallas. Ninety nine yards of total offense and the Redskins are playing a very soft defense here they they're giving them the 10 yards yeah they rush for and that pass is caught and then it is lost by Patrick Creighton but he stayed in bounds he couldn't get out of bounds and time will expire I think he just tried to dump the ball off out of bounds but they couldn't stop the clock. John you think about all of the, the, the old Cowboys from the Landry years and then you've got these Cowboys and very neat that they're all three go into the ring of honor together. Yeah and they were and they were so special because they really played as a team. I mean they were the triplets and they were the leader of the team but you, know, you think of Michael Irvin you know being a great receiver but he was a great team guy. I mean he was kind of the heart and soul that, that got everyone going and and Troy Aikman was so accurate. I don't know if there's ever been a guy more accurate than than Troy Aikman and and you talk about a tough running back. I don't know that there's ever been a tougher running back. Well maybe maybe Walter Payton but uh, Emmett Smith was one of the toughest running backs of all time. Sure, remember that that performance in uh, New York with a separated shoulder and didn't, didn't I was matter, there. nothing nothing could could stop him. I was there there was only one time that I've been a broadcaster in my life that I ever went into a locker room after a game to congratulate a player and and it, and it was Emmett Smith on that day. I mean and he was he was out and they were putting ice all over his body and he had IVs in both arms and you know, and he doesn't remember anything, but you know, I, I said this. This is one of the greatest performances that I've ever seen in my life. Oh yeah, no, no, no question about it. And he turned in any number of them. He was tremendous on on Monday night. He almost well, he rose to the occasion. Didn't matter what day of the week it was, but like like Jerry Rice, he saved some of his best games for Monday. And the guys are going to come up here and visit with us in the third period. And that would be nice. But you know what's exciting? Just look at this crowd. I don't think. That a person left their seat during this halftime. Right. I don't remember. I don't think that I've ever seen that before in my life. I mean, it, I was sitting here watching this thing, and I was looking at the crowd, and I thought this crowd may be bigger at halftime than it was sometimes during the first half. Everybody's happy about that, except the concessionaire. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Everybody stayed. Let's check in now with Sam Ryan. Sam. Hello. I spoke to both coaches at the half, starting with Joe Gibbs. I asked him about his defense being on the field almost 17 minutes in the first half. In this heat, he said the reason for that, turnovers. We turned the ball over twice. For his offense, struggling to move the ball in the first half, he said we have to do a better job with the ball. As for Bill Parcells, he said, hey, we are struggling just like they are, despite having the edge in time of possession and decent field position. He said we've slowed down a bit. we got to get a running game going. Al? 
Yeah, that's a good point in the sense that uh, you think of Julius Jones as their stud out of the backfield. He's carried 11 times for 42 yards. On the other side, you've got Clinton Portis, nine carries for 31 yards. You only had 104 yards of total offense for Dallas and 85 yards John for Washington right, and I think you know part of it is is real good defense by both teams and another part of it has to be this heat I mean it, it you, know, you know it's tough it's tough to play it's tough to play full speed it's tough to do all those big things that you want to do I mean I think maybe the first team that makes a big play is going to win this thing and maybe the first team that tries to make a big play may get the big play and win this thing. Has that feel? It was 99 degrees this afternoon in Irving, Texas, and right now, well, it's cooled off to I don't know, but 91. <laughs> yeah, but down in the field, yeah. look at it. It's 100 degrees down in the field. Yep. Any way you look at it. And as, you, as a lineman, you know, they say you know, good weather for this. Good. This, this is a lineman's hell. Cortez kicks off. It's fielded by Liddell Betts at the goal line. And what a smack he takes. Up at the 13-yard line from Brett Pierce, who caught the first pass of the night for Dallas in the first quarter. Numbers, rushing yards, about even. Passing yards, Cowboys with 57, but that's 24 more. Then the Redskins talked about total yardage and the turnovers that second turnover did not hurt the Redskins because it came at the end of the first half and Dallas couldn't capitalize it. First one led to the field goal. Three nothing from the 18. Mark Brunel who is nine out of 12. But for only 56 yards and they'll start with Portis. Reversing direction tackled up at the 20 yard line gain of a couple it'll be second down and eight. His numbers were pretty good compositely, but his yards per carry average was way off last season. He didn't look like the same guy at Washington as he was at Denver. Second and eight, they fake it to him, and then Janelle throws out to the left side, and that's caught by Robert Royal. You go back and you take a look at what Portis did with Denver in his first year there. 2002 1500 yards and then 1591 in 2003 you see how many more times he carried the ball low last year 343 carries for only 1315 only player in NFL history a year to year increase of 50 or more carries but 100 yards less rushing it was a totally different type of offensive line the Denver Broncos and the types of things they do and the types of things that the Redskin offensive line does. third and three and Brunel rolling to his right throwing and that pass is incomplete going down to the ground to try to get it was Santana Moss who's been limited to one catch in the game for no net yards. And that's one that they should have had there. I mean that's that's the thing that you try and do when a when a guy is running a sideline or comeback you try and lead him back and Santana Moss has to come back and get that one. I think Mark Brunel threw it exactly where it had to go. This will be Andy Groom's fourth punt of the game. And it's a very short one. That's going to sit Dallas up in pretty good position. Except he does get a decent bounce and then Creighton runs it back. And there's a hit at the end of the play, or at least the crowd thinks there was, at the 40-yard line. But there is no flag. And Dallas will take over at about that spot. Cowboys start track tonight as we take a look at Bledsoe. 16 attempts 57 yards so he's averaging less than four yards per attempt Jones is averaging 3.8 per carry and Glenn would be their number one receiver seven different Cowboys have caught passes tonight but Terry two for 14 yards Cowboys are changing their center now Andre Gerard is in there he's a bigger stronger guy than Al Johnson Gerard moved over from Guard who he played last year and Jones is able to break one but a flag is down and maybe that's the reason he was able to break one as he picks up 14 pending the call from the referee Larry Nimmers. If you're going to break one that's where you're going to break it on the left side because that offensive line flows out Holding, Adams and Larry run, Allen. Number 76. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Adams are so good and, and Flozell Adams is so good at holding. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, that offensive line, I was watching them the other day in practice, and they look better than I've ever seen them. Here's Flozell Adams here. And you say, holy moly, that's a pancake. You gotta let a guy do that. Yeah. Did you see what he did? Yeah. I mean, he just got his hands and started, boom, just put him right in the ground. What the heck is wrong with that? Yeah, and that's why Adams was arguing the call. He says, what do I have to do? Oh, no, that's a block. That's, that's what, I mean, you live for those things. First and 20. A little toss back to Bledsoe from Jones. And out it goes Terry Glenn for the touchdown. Well, Mr. Sean Payton getting to call the plays first and 20 and goes to the back of the playbook for the Knights' first touchdown. Well, you talked about a big play. How to be coming. Who's going to get it first? The Cowboys got it first. Hands off here to Julius Jones. He pitches back to DePletso, the O flea flicker. Terry Glenn is behind everyone, and Drew Bletso makes a perfect throw. That's what you get when you, you get a guy like Sean Taylor, the safety there. He's a very, very aggressive guy, number 21. He is going to take a little bite on any run action. He bit, so does Sean Springs. Cortez converts. There's a number you can donate by calling that number, NFL Hurricane Relief Weekend. Drew Bledsoe and Terry Glenn played together in New England. They linked there for 21 touchdown passes 21 touchdown receptions for Glenn the only guy who's caught more touchdown passes from Bledsoe throughout his career would be Ben Coates who was on the receiving end of 45 as Liddell Betts brings this back to the 32 and a flag is down. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 50, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. That is Harry Campbell, reserve linebacker. Let's watch that play again now. Now here's Sean Taylor here. Here's Julius Jones. He's going to get the ball. Now watch him here in the clicker. You see, he's a he's a cover two safety. He sees the run. He steps up. Now when he steps up, watch Terry Glenn right here get by him. Again, we'll do the same thing. You fake the run. He's reading the run all the way. He sees it. He goes to step up, and by the time he sees Terry Glenn go by him, it's too late. He's chasing to the end zone. And he lost his footing to compound it, and that's your first touchdown, and that's followed up by a big-time sack as the rookie Chris Canty out of Virginia, one of three defensive ends chosen in the draft by Bill Parcells, gets the sack. Chris Canty is going to be something special. I saw him in training camp and I knew that this guy, I mean, he's big and he's and he's fast and he's quick and he has moves and and everyone was talking about Chris Canty as a young Leon Lett. Remember Leon Lett? Sure. That's what Chris Canty looks like when Leon Lett was a rookie or second year guy. Leon Lett was hard to forget. Second down and 18. And Brunel guns one out to the 22 yard line and that's David Patton who came over from New England as they revamped the receiving core this year. They go to the smaller receivers a la the Smurfs of the old days and guys like Patton and Santana Moss. Well Joe Gibbs wanted to get big plays and that's why he went to Patton and Santana Moss and I think you know, he has to get in a position in this third and fourth quarter while he calls some of those plays. Right now they don't have the best field position to do it. Third and six from the 22. The Redskins still looking for their first touchdown of the season. One last week with three John Hall field goals. And that's incomplete intended for David Patton. And they're the only team in the NFL without a touchdown as we conclude week two. You know, one of the problems with changing quarterbacks and bringing your backup quarterback in in the first week is most of the training camp, most of the preseason, you have one guy, Patrick Ramsey, getting all the work. And the second guy doesn't get as much. And then you bring the second guy in, and he's the starter. And it doesn't look like Mark Brunel has great timing with these receivers. Thus, Andy Groom comes in to punt for the fifth time in the game. Patrick Creighton is back to run it back. Good kick. Creighton, who had six receptions last week in San Diego, brings this punt back up to the 30. Three yard line where he's tackled by James Thrash. 
Back in Texas, you look down upon downtown Dallas, a few miles to the west. Texas Stadium, Dallas has it from the 33 yard line to begin this drive with the Julius Jones run over the left side to the 35 yard line. Second down and eight. Injury means opportunity back in 92. Don Mikowski got hurt. Brett Favre took over in Green Bay, and they haven't supplanted him yet. And then you go back to 99 when Trent Green was going to be the Ram starter, hurt in preseason. Kurt Warner out of nowhere to lead him to the Super Bowl, two time NFL MVP. Then Drew Bledsoe got hurt in September 2001. That opened the door for Tom Brady, and you know the rest. Brady with three rings, Bledsoe to Buffalo, and now to Dallas. Second down and eight from the 35 yard line. To the outside he goes, and it's Keyshawn Johnson making the catch. He pulled it in, forced out of bounds, first down. You know, Bill Parcells was saying the other day that one of the things that Drew Bledsoe has to learn is when Keyshawn Johnson is open. He said Vinny Testaverde knew that because he played with him. Drew Bledsoe has to learn it. He doesn't get big cushions. I mean, it's not going to be a big cushion. It's going to be pretty close. But he has a big body that he knows how to use, and he will come up with it most of the time. And there's an example. And Bledsoe loses the ball, but recovers himself at the 43-yard line. You know, Bill Parcells talking about when he took over the team and how much success would they have and how quickly. He kept going back to the quarterback, and he inherited Quincy Carter back in 2003. Then Carter was dumped last year in training camp, and he brought Vinny Testaverde back. And Vinny had been his guy in New York with the Jets in 98, and now he hopes that Bledsoe can be what Vinny was in 98. Yeah, and, and I think all he wants to do is have him manage the game, which he's doing very well, have a good running game, and play excellent defense. On second and 12, that is caught at midfield, and it will be third and short after the tight end, Jason Witten, who the Chargers took out of the game last week. They concentrated on him. He caught only one, and that left it wide open for Keyshawn and for Creighton. I'm impressed with this pass protection to let Jason Witten do these types of things here. He's, he's just running a hook against the linebacker, but but the thing that they've done is they have to give Drew Bledsoe pass protection, and I think that this group tonight has done an excellent job. I thought the Redskins would be all over Drew Bledsoe with Drew, Drew Bledsoe tonight. Third down in the short two, and they're going to go to the air. So Sean Payton opening it up to the outside he goes and it's incomplete they did that earlier with success on a third and one then of course they have the flea for flicker for the touchdown and Peyton figures in a run situation with a jumbo backfield in effect and a fullback in the backfield or a tight end back there he'd go to the air but incomplete yeah and that's that's when it was only a two receiver route you see there's only two guys out so either either you're going to fool them and they're going to get open or you have to throw it away Matt McBriar to punt. His fourth kick of the night. James Thrash is back. Tries to put a little backspin on it. And he does. And it's down at the eight yard line. Well, there's a two man booth, and then there's a three man booth, and then there's a five man booth. The triplets are here after that great halftime ceremony. These guys, numbers retired, and try now the ring of honor as the Washington Redskins take over back at the eight yard line in a 10 nothing game. And Mark Brunel, the quarterback, will go to the air on first down and swing it to the outside. And that pass is caught by Cooley. But Cooley, as one official looks at the other, was out of bounds. Emmett, start with you. Just your feelings, the emotions after that great halftime ceremony where nobody went to the concession stand. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I was a little teary-eyed for a second there, and uh, it got a little emotional when you start seeing the highlights of Troy and Michael coming th coming down, and then all of a sudden they show your highlights, and you That's hear. That's what he really liked. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, then you start, then you start realizing like something serious is about to happen. <laughs> so, I mean, it was a great moment. It really was. Yeah, the crowd was. I mean, they were stoked before the game about this as Brunel throws to the outside here and that pass is incomplete and a flag is down on the play and Michael what is it you, you were here the longest you were here from 88 you were here when things were tough and you've got a personal foul here defensively helmet to helmet roughing the quarterback against Dallas you were here when it was at the bottom 
and then Troy came along and then Emmett and so then to stand there tonight what was that like for you. Well it was a great feeling and, and to stand there with these two guys because like you said I, I've been here the longest but we grew into all of this together we made it all together we made a commitment to, to stay together and, and that's the great thing about it I mean we had a bunch of great guys that we played football with and we thank God for those guys. But it is truly a blessing to go on with my very good friends right here in Minnesota. Troy. Michael was here and when Tom Landry was the coach and he left him in 89 and then Jerry Jones bought the team and Jimmy Johnson came in and Troy Aikman became the number one choice in the draft. As Brunel on first down after that penalty against Leroy Glover will give the ball to Clinton Portis to the outside. And then Troy you started out one in 15 but when did you when did you guys know how long did it take before you realized we've got something special happening. You know it's a good question Al I think maybe at the uh, end of the 1990 season maybe 91 but you know I'm most proud of the fact that we enjoyed tremendous success together and there's a lot of things that tear apart a team but yet we didn't allow those things to tear apart us and it, it wasn't just isolated out of to, to us three there were a lot of great players Jay Novacek Gerald Johnston Charles Haley and others that we really sacrificed individually in order for us to achieve the great things that we wanted to for our team second down and five after that five yard gain by Portis and Brunel is going to go deep over the middle and that pass is incomplete with the flag you know that's what I always thought I mean I mean you guys were really a team and that's what it was all about and and the sacrifice and the toughness and everything that had to go with it. I remember Norv Turner when he was the offensive coordinator. I saw him up here, you know, before a game when and I said, What are you gonna do today? I thought, well, you know, I'll get a nugget here. And he said, Well, he said, <laughs> Troy's <laughs> gonna get it. <laughs> no, <laughs> Troy's gonna get it, he's gonna hand it to Emmett <laughs> and throw it at Michael. Well <laughs> that's, uh, that's you pretty know what? good. Here it is right yeah, here. And and uh, the guy who's been overlooked in all of our successes, one, Jimmy Johnson. Yes. to North Turner because exactly. without either one of those guys there's no doubt in my mind that we would have been able to go on and have the success that we had and I know that both Michael and Emmett agree with that. Yes, I remember that. once talking to you about it and saying you know there's not enough quarterbacks in the league to go around 32 teams and not 32 top quarterbacks and you said I'll tell you what's fewer than quarterbacks yeah. you said quarterback coaches. Second and 15 after the holding call and that's Portis. And you know Troy I was thinking about you know you've got free agency and you've got Jimmy leaving prematurely you guys must muse about how many you might have won. Well <laughs> we do at times but to, you know what John you're absolutely right I think there's there's very few guys out there that can really put an offense together that allowed guys like us to have the success that we had and let's not discount what Jerry Jones meant to this organization he was willing to do anything that he could and there's not a lot of owners in this league that will commit themselves to win the way that he does. Third down and 12 and Brunel on third and 12 flushed out throwing against the grain and that pass is caught by Moss deep downfield on a third and 12 to the 38 yard line. Little improvisation. Hey he did a great job of scrambling around and buying himself some time and finding a wide open guy. Unfortunately the coverage broke down. Well you guys are in the broadcasting business so you know we've got three analysts right here Emmett. Well I'm not as good as these two gentlemen behind me but uh, you know this is my first time up in the booth actually looking at a game up here and, and calling it for, as I see it so you know like I said he did a great job of buying time. <laughs> Forty one yards. Of course Troy works with Joe Fox Fox's number one team Michael part of the family at right. ESPN and and but now with the NFL Network. Yes, yes. Enjoying my time over there with Rich Eisen and Terrell Davis on Mondays. From the Troy, I think your name is right under the booth here. Hey, that play clock went, went dead. It did. They got a delay of the game. Guys, great night for you. Go back and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you guys Fantastic. very much. Great to be here to see you all. Good to see you. Congratulations. Congratulations. John, you've always been the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks, Michael. Good to see you, everybody. Troy Aikman there he is enshrined in the ring of honor Emmett Smith Michael Irvin that's the way it should be the triplets go in together on this very special night at Texas Stadium. And for those of you who have been watching the Giants and the Saints were in Texas Stadium Dallas leads 10 nothing but Washington has mounted 
this drive uh, the longest play of the night a 41 yard pass to Moss and now you've got Liddell Betts carrying Betts the backup to Clinton Portis so Washington not only trying to get on the board but Joe Gibbs's team seeking its first touchdown of the season. Well you know we were talking about how they were a little conservative I thought in the first half I thought both sides were then the Cowboys came out they opened up a little and now on this drive the Redskins were opened up and what they needed was that pass that they got that out and up to Santana Moss and that came on a third down and 12 now out of the shotgun second down and 13. Brunel guns it over the middle into traffic. Cowboys say incomplete, and it is concurred by the umpire. David Patton was the intended receiver. You know, and I think that's the stuff that the that the Dallas Cowboy defense is susceptible to now is is the one that they got to Santana Moss is a is a double move. I mean, he's thrown plenty of outs and plenty of you know hooks and and comebacks and those kinds of things and I think that double move you know that out and up or something like that is still there against this defense Mike Zimmer was one of the few coaches Bill Parcells kept when he came in Zimmer goes all the way back to the Barry Switzer era third down and 13 Brunel chased from behind grabbed from behind and sacked from behind by Scott Shanley you know, Scott Shanley is a nickel linebacker and that's that's what you want when you put a nickel linebacker in a guy that can run because if they want to if the quarterback wants to get get scrambled and start moving out you need a guy that can chase him down and not only chase him down but catch him and when you put in that nickel linebacker he better be able to run and that brings Andy Groom into punt. Groom with a busy night. Short kick, fair court, 19 yard line by Patrick Creighton. And a 70 yard free flicker lets it again make it 10 to nothing. And this is Julius Jones, tackled there by Marcus Washington. You know, John, we were talking to Bill Parcells, and we mentioned at the top, he's been the coach for a little bit more than two calendar years. There are only seven guys from the pre Parcells era. So we bring it up yesterday. We go, Bill, seven out of 53 in two years. And typical of Parcells, he had a one word response. Good. <laughs> he probably thinks there should be four or five. <laughs> but, but that was his job. I mean, I mean, he had to come in here and he had to turn this team around and he had to clean it up and he had to get better players and and you know young and faster and all those things. And he's doing that. But he took over a team that had been five and 11 for three consecutive years. And the pass is incomplete here to make it third down. You know, and the, and the, the guys that he brings in are a lot of players that have played for him at other places. 34, in fact, have played for Parcells with more than one team, and that is the most of any coach in history by far. Well, I think you know that's going to happen when you're the head coach of four teams. I mean, there's not a lot of that in history either. I mean, he was a head coach of the Giants and then the Patriots and then the Jets and now the Cowboys. So, if you coach a lot of teams, you're going to have a lot of ex-players out there. We talked about it yesterday. He said, "You know what? I just try to bring in good players." And of course, it helps if you know the system and you know what kind of a guy he is, and what it's like to play for him. As does Bledsoe. Who hits Jones here makes the juggling catch and is able to convert. It's a first down. You know, everyone out there that hates the prevent defense can can stand up right now and say, "Count me on this one." Because what do you do in a prevent? They played this very soft three-man rush. Everyone was off, and they let Drew Bledsoe hit underneath. And they were so soft, they gave him enough room to run for a first down. Yeah, I, mean, I think I think in this part of the game you don't get that soft on third down. Split backs here and they give it to Jones. And what they do in the backfield is they split the backs, but one of the backs is Jason Witten, who is the tight end. For some of the 34 that have played for Bill with at least two teams. Second down and 11 from the 31 yard line. And Jones goes next to nowhere. See, we're talking about the Cowboys playing tonight without a fullback, so they have two tight ends. Jason Witten being the move guy, and that time it was Dan Campbell 
was lined up in the backfield and it was a lead play a four hole lead play so he became the, the, the lead back on that now that's where you, that's where you lose a little you know that a fullback is a better lead blocker not as good a receiver and not as good at the line of scrimmage third down and nine and Marcus Washington is going to come off the field he's shaken up play clock will start from 25 Washington has to come out for at least one play Chris Clemens comes in to start third down and 10 they're in the three three man nickel here this is where they bring a lot of their exotic blitzes and they have six or seven defensive backs in there and it's caught but not a first down 37 yard line Jason Witten makes the catch but the punting group will have to come in well, the Redskins have, have really blitzed very little I thought that would be a big thing they started out early in the game blitzing and I think that the Cowboys you know gashed him with a couple runs I think Bledsoe made a couple of passes and and they haven't run a blitz this half and I don't remember towards the end of the half that they'd blitz much Matt McBriar this will be his fifth punt of the night Andy Groom his opposite number has punted six times tonight so 11 punts in the game and that would figure in a 10 nothing contest and this one is a booming kick with side spin on it. <laughs> Washington tonight averaging 3.6 yards per rush and 3.6 yards per pass. So 3.6 per play period. You hold your opponent to 3.6 per play, you win a lot of games. A eight, lot of games. Yeah, they've had eight drives, six punts, two turnovers, three three and outs, 64 yards rushing, 82 yards passing. That's good defense. An ugly offense, and that pass is caught. At the nine yard line by Taylor Jacobs, who gets tackled up at about the 13. Keep any of the email, Keith Jackson. Is, is that a possum hunting moon? Is that a possum hunting moon? No. It's too, too big for a possum hunting moon. It could be a harvest moon, though. Close. Because they're, I know they're harvesting grapes now about this time of year. That time is of uh, the late summer, early fall, as Clinton Portis takes it up to the 21. Hmm. No, I think a possum hunting moon is a little, little smaller. Well, it's a full moon. Last time we looked at it, I mean, it was orange. Yep. But you can't beat a, a football game on a night of a full moon when it's 100 degrees down in the field. Now, to Kelly Hayes, would you ask Keith Jackson at the college game this week if that was a possum hunting moon or not? Inquiring minds need to know. From the 21 yard line, they're going to fake a reverse. And that doesn't fool number 94. That's DeMarcus Ware, one of their two number one draft choices. The 11th guy picked overall, had that spectacular preseason Monday night game at Seattle. Big play right here. You know what I like about DeMarcus Ware? He stays alive. I mean, Mike Sellers is trying to block him, and he gets his hands on him, holds it, holds it, holds it, plays off of Sellers and makes a tackle. Al Michaels, John Madden, Sam Ryan filling in for Michelle Tafoya on maternity leave. The Redskins have lost 25 straight when trailing going into the fourth quarter. I'm going to sign right there, and right now they're trailing 10 to nothing from the 18-yard line. Skins have still not scored a touchdown in seven quarters this season. Cooley up to the 24. John, we're talking about harvest moons and possum hunting moons, and then there's a, a blue moon. A blue moon is how long it's taken the Redskins between touchdowns because their last one was last December. Yeah, and it, and it doesn't look like this offense has a good feeling for each other. I mean, it doesn't look like there's any confidence out there. They feel that we can really do this. I mean, we can run the ball. We can throw it to our wide receiver. You know, I don't get that feeling that they feel confident in any of those things. Third down and seven from the 24-yard line. Brunel under pressure gets it away and it's caught they convert here as Santana Moss makes the catch so a couple of Cowboys were in the face that time of Brunel it was Williams on a safety blitz and Glover coming from the middle of the defensive line and he gets it away and converts 
Yeah, and, and that's that's one of the things that Roy Williams does well. He's a good blitzer. You see him come from the edge, and now these these safeties, you know, you know, they're getting moves, pass rush moves like defensive ends and linebackers. And they, and they all have that move, dip that shoulder, get under, you know, go for the strip. They're doing the same things linebackers are doing. Adele Betts is the running back from the 33 yard line. No play. Full start. Full start offense number 89. Five yard penalty, still first down. Moss, the wide out. A blast from the past. Joe Gibbs looks awfully calm there for things that are going around. I, I I talked to him before the game. I was out in the bus and I pulled up and Joe came up and talked to me on the bus and he said his guts are just tearing him up inside. And he's always been that way. I mean, you know, Joe Gibbs back when you know he had the Hogs and he was winning all those games, he would always say that you know his guts are just tearing him up. And they have to be right now with his team not able to get into the end zone and more than seven quarters of action on first and 15. And Brunel will get chased and then get hog tied by Anthony Henry. Get the horse collar rule in effect, but not right there because he had him by the shirt. Yeah, I mean, you have to watch out that you don't horse collar when you hog tie. <laughs> right. You can hog tie, but you can't horse collar. But this is all about coverage. And you just watch. I mean, it's a zone coverage, and and everyone is reacting. Every everyone's in their zones. Everyone is is is, is shortening down, taking things away, taking the underneath away, squeezing everything on Mark Brunel. So that wasn't anything except great coverage. Second and eleven from the thirty-two. Another short pass is incomplete because Al Singleton got there as soon as the ball got to the hands of Robert Royal. Yeah, you just don't feel that the Redskins have anything that can anything in their offense that can pressure you. you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, you have to get something where you, you know you have to worry about things deep so you can hit underneath so you can get some running games. But it seems like against this offense, you can just keep everything easily right in front of you. Just one big play tonight, that 41 yarder to Moss. Third down and 11 from the 32 yard line. Brunel gets excellent protection, but then he lost one that's juggled and dropped incomplete. And on third and 11, I mean, how often are you going to be able to convert on a play like that to Clinton Portis? Well, you're not you're not going to be because one thing that the the Cowboys do when they get their nickel defense in there they're all good tacklers and, and you may gain one or two or three yards but you're not going to get the whole thing. Andy Groom. The seventh punt of the night good deep kick. Twelve yard line Patrick Creighton. <laughs> And he gets tackled. And Washington will be one and one with Dallas wins tonight. And they begin here with Julius Jones with a nice burst over the left side. And he picks up eight yards behind Larry Allen and Flozell Adams. It's a nice little uh, escort. Well, again, that's that's the side that you want to run to because it doesn't get much more powerful than this. When you have a Larry Allen or Flozell Adams right there. I mean, they're, they're as strong and as powerful as you can get. <laughs> Look what Larry Allen does. He just takes his guy, puts him right to the ground. They seal off everything to the inside and just run right off it. We've seen that act before. Any guy that can bench press 700 pounds has to be able to block down on a defensive tackle. Amazing. Second and two. Let's so drop it. Gives it to Jones, and Jones comes close to getting the first down. Appears to be... Just a little short. What is Those three guys spotting probably couldn't have handled their third. <laughs> right. Third and a short one. They send Keyshawn in motion to the inside as a fake toss. And Witten makes the catch up at the 37 yard line. You see Larry Allen on that last play. He didn't even have his uh, a mouth guard in. Illegal motion. On the offense, number 19 is moving forward at the snap. That's a five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Keyshawn just 
just started to turn upfield as he moved to the inside. Yeah, and that's the one that they're calling tighter this year. You know, because I think they were letting him get away with that a year ago. But when you have to come in and you know and crack on a defensive end, you will tend to start up the field. And there's not a lot of wide receivers that will come in. I mean, there's not a lot of coaches that will ask their wide receiver to come in and crack on a defensive end. But Keyshawn Johnson is one of those guys. Keyshawn is 6'4 and 210 pounds. Third down and six now after the penalty back at the 28-yard line. Bledsoe. He's going to go deep. He's going to go for Glenn. And he's going to hit Glenn again. Terry Glenn who has scored the only touchdown of the game. And Bledsoe says, come on. Keep it up. Let's get downfield. We've got him on the run to the 29-yard line. You know, they always talk about Drew Bledsoe that he holds the ball too long, but he does let his guys get deep. And if you can pass protect like this, and the Cowboys have been pass protecting well all night, then Drew Bledsoe can have time to make these throws down the field to Terry Glenn. 43 yards. Glenn's caught four now for 127 receiving yards from the 29 yard line. Jones. To the 24 yard line. You know, I think a big part of this story is that Drew Bledsoe hasn't been sacked. I really thought that the Redskins you know, had such a good defense and Greg Williams did so many things, blitzing and so on. Knew Drew Bledsoe was going to blitz him a lot right up the middle and, you know, would really make it tough. They haven't sacked him. I think they've only hit him once or twice and knocked him down once. So you can say Drew Bledsoe is doing a great job of getting the ball out of there. I think Sean Payton is doing a great job of calling plays. And this offensive line tonight is very special. Tremendous. Second down and five from the 24-yard line. You saw Bledsoe just went past United and career passing yards. Next up will be Joe Montana. And next up is a first down after Julius Jones on his 19th carry of the night takes the ball down to the 17s or 16 yard line first down Al Johnson is back in at center you know that's one of the offensive line positions that they rotate and you're going to see he gets a pretty good block there he just stays with his guy and gets him going to the outside then gets him down just as Julius Jones goes by you know that old deal sometimes you know the run will open up the pass and a lot of times I think we're seeing it right now the pass or the deep pass has opened up the run. Cowboys started this drive at their own 24. And there's a flag. You know, John, you're talking about this offensive line for Dallas. To me, one of the most amazing things is the science of drafting. And you look at Dallas through the years, and they've made Holding obviously offense, some great choices. Number 73. Ten yard penalty. Repeat first down. Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin and Emmett Smith in the first round. Look at this. 300 consecutive games. No offensive lineman who was drafted in the first round has started. You have to go back 20 years to Howard Richards. You have your Flozell Adams and your Larry Allen and all the guys who led the way through the years for Herschel Walker and Emmett Smith all of those years. And now Julius Jones, not a single first rounder has started on the offensive front. Right, and how about just Rob Petiti, the rookie we were talking about, the right tackle right there. He's a sixth round pick. Now, if you would redraft him again, I'll guarantee you there'd be some first <laughs> yeah. round picks. Oh, yeah. Larry Allen would probably be the first player chosen in the draft. Now you got the rookie Tyson Thompson in the backfield. He's a as fast as they come, a rookie out of San Jose State, a free agent who's made the team. Cedric Killings made the stop. Bill Parcells telling us before the game in Seattle, we're going to see a lot of Thompson. We didn't see him at all that night, but he's in there tonight. Yeah, we saw him in a uh, tape in a preseason game in Arizona, and he was faster than anyone in the field. And I said, this guy is really something special. What did he have here? He was, he's from Irving. Right. Right here. He played here. I think in a high school game, he gained over 500 yards. 528 rushing yards. Second and 18. And the crowd, of course, has been reading all about him, and they watched him play in preseason, so they got excited when he got the ball there as Lamar Marshall makes the tackle. I think he's probably the first local high school player that has ever played for the Cowboys. I think out of Irving. I think so. They believe he is. You know, that's that's the kind of thing that Bill Parcells does, too, and, and I've always believed in, you know, if you're not sure of a guy, 
You know, when you're signing a free agent or or late round draft choice, you always take either size or speed. You don't take a tweener in any one of those areas. You can take a big guy or a fast guy. This guy's a fast guy. The third down and 15 coming up. And there's the number NFL Hurricane Relief Weekend earlier tonight. A lot of you saw the Saints go to the Meadowlands. The Giants won that game to go to 2 0. New Orleans is now 1 1. And here it's 10 to nothing. Dallas, it's third down and 15 after that timeout. And Tyson Thompson goes nowhere. So now Cortez will have to come in for a 40 yard field goal attempt. And the crowd starts. Well, I guess they. they what? I mean, Sean Payton tonight's been tremendous on third and long and they had a flea flicker for a touchdown but you know what uh, you know what have you done for me lately yeah I would boo him on that one though too I mean you're <laughs> third and long and you just run a straight handoff right right into the middle of the line I mean do so you know I mean run a draw run a screen if you don't want to air it out then you know you know, do something where you have a chance that, that was a give up play they had no chance and after the timeout maybe they had too much time to think about it 41 yard attempt here by Cortez is good his second of the game. You know that many of the evacuees came to Texas to Houston and to San Antonio also to Dallas. Many were at Reunion Arena more were at the Dallas Convention Center as the folks in Texas opened up their hearts and facilities to many of the evacuees as James Thrash gets back to receive this kick for the Washington Redskins Jose Cortez to kick off Dallas on top 13 to nothing. They'll head west next week. Take on San Francisco. Washington has a bye, an early bye in week three. Bets from the four yard line. And his helmet taken off as he gets up to the 24 yard line. Brunel and company go to work and we check in with Sam Ryan. Sam. Well, Al, you've been talking about hurricane disaster and relief. Washington Redskins linebacker LeVar Arrington and his wife Trisha, they wanted to do something other than just writing a check. So LeVar told me they actually thought about it and they helped out the evacuees, 250 of them. They brought them shopping last week to Walmart, giving them gift cards of $200. Now LeVar told me the one thing that really stuck with him out of that, a gentleman came up to him and said, I have a job interview tomorrow. I didn't have anything to wear. Not only have you given me clothing, but you've given me confidence, Al. Well, thank you, Sam. A lot of players have done some tremendous things over the past three and a half weeks. There's the pass to David Patton is incomplete and will be second down. And you've got uh, Patton coming off slowly. You know, you have to like the way the, the Cowboys have, have been rotating different players. As we said earlier, Bill Parcells had 22 active defensive players, and he's been rolling them all night. And I think it's starting to show right here now in the fourth quarter where they still look relatively fresh. And that was the case last week against San Diego. Brunel rolling to his right, going against the grain, hitting his man Cooley on the run. And Cooley gets taken down, and you got a, another lost helmet here from Scott Shanley. You know, did you ever wonder why they why they rotate defensive guys all the time and they never rotate offensive linemen? Yeah, we were talking about that yesterday. I get, I get you know illegal contact on the defense number 26. Penalty is declined. First down, Washington. Meanwhile, Shanley comes out bloodied, but we would assume unbowed. Uh, he better he better get something stuck up in there to stop that bleeding. It's going to go right down into his mouth. Yeah, in the NBA, he'd be out of the game right now. He better get his stuff fixed up. I don't think he had that second chin strap piece on. No. Now, see, he still has one loose. Blood all over the front of his uniform. First down and ten from the 38-yard line, and Brunel is going to go deep down the left sideline, but the coverage is very good. Intended for Taylor Jacobs wearing Gary Clark's old number covered there by Anthony Henry. Bill Parcells. He's like a, a great relief pitcher who comes in with the lead. And if he has a 13 or more point lead anytime in the fourth quarter, 77 and 0. And you know why that is? Because he always builds his team 
with a good running game and good defense. And if you get the lead and you can run the ball and control it and you have good defense, that will be your record. Second and ten. From the 38, pressure on Brunel. And then you've got Roy Williams coming in free. There's a good chance you're going to see a sack, and that's what happens here. I think Brunel saw it, too, because, you know, he's left-handed, and that's on his left side. So Roy Williams came from that side. Mark Brunel saw it all the way. There was just nothing he could do about it. But here comes Roy Williams from the outside. That was the side Brunel was looking right at. But he's just too quick. That's close to a horse collar, too. Well, it's okay to horse collar a quarterback. You know, I mean, I mean, why that is, I don't know. But it's not illegal if you horse collar a quarterback. That's a sack and a half. That's a 17-yard sack. And now you've got Brunel. And Brunel with some moves up to the 45-yard line. Mark with a little deke and a fake and up to the 45. So it was third and a mile and now it's fourth and three and with 427 remaining Washington down by 13 will line up to go for it but first they will discuss it after the timeout it's fourth down and two for the Washington Redskins they have to go for it from the 46 and a floating pass is caught by James Thrash and they pick up the first down so it was third down and 27 Brunel then took off for a 25 yard gain on a run and this pass here on fourth down and they convert and they keep it going and they are inside the 35 yard line and watch what happens it's Roy Williams again is going to come on him and he's going to see it this time and get rid of it quickly what the left here comes Roy Williams again he knows I've seen that guy before my outside guy isn't covered I have to get rid of it right now shotgun and then Brunel juggles the snap but there's a flag before the snap false start offense number 77 five yard penalty still first down that's Randy Thomas the ex jet Brunel but that's quite in contrast John to what's happened tonight to Mr. Bledsoe yeah, I know he's been hit six times knocked down three times been sacked five times and coming into this game I kind of felt that the Redskin defense would probably be doing something like that to Drew Bledsoe and the Cowboys and Bledsoe on the other hand look one hit one knockdown Drew Bledsoe hasn't been sacked does need to have the uniform washed first and 15 Brunel going deep Incomplete, and he had three Cowboys back there covering Jacobs. You had Anthony Henry and Roy Williams and Keith Davis, the two safeties in the left corner. Well, that Roy Williams is a heck of a player. He's been all over the field tonight. We've seen him make tackles like a linebacker. We've seen him rush like a defensive lineman. And here we see him play safety like a defensive back. He's a deep guy. He'll come in right now. Got the ball at the highest point. The only thing, it went right through his hands and hit him in the face mask. That's what you try and do as a defensive back. You try and get up and get the ball at, at, at its highest point. Second down and 15. Brunel flushed out again. Chase has to throw it away. Pressure put on that time. He had Kenyon Coleman coming after him, and along with Eric Abagu. And he was trying to throw a slant out here to the right side. And one thing about a slant, it's a timing pattern. If there's a guy on the inside, you better not throw it. So he had to bring the ball down. You can see he's going to throw the slant right here. And you see that it's covered because the safety starts to come over to that side. So he has to pull it down. See, there's a guy inside waiting right there. Shotgun, third down, 15. Brunel hangs in there, and the pass is incomplete. He tried to throw it to Liddell Betts. The running back, and so now Washington with 3:55 on the clock, down to a fourth and long. Do you think Liddell Betts kind of felt that win back there? Yes, you yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there was someone there was, that was good, good linebacker coverage, and if he catches that, there's going to be a collision. So whether he catches it or not, you may as well take the collision. Crowd rising. Dallas defense pitching a shutout, 13 nothing. They have to get to the 24-yard line to convert. Brunel 
Hanging in. Going deep, and the pass is caught for a touchdown by Santana Moss. And the Washington Redskins finally get into the end zone in 2005. And that was the thing that everyone had to be calling for. You know, you bring in a Santana Moss, and he's going to be your deep threat. You didn't have a lot of big plays last year, but you're bringing him in to make the big play. Here he is. He's going to run a post. You, you start to the to the outside, then you go back to the inside, then and then come deep. And I think Brunel made a perfect throw there because he had to get it over the head of Roy Williams. But that was kind of a post corner post. And Glenn covering and Moss and Glenn have seen a lot of each other in practice through the years as former Jets. The extra point by Nick Novak. We've got a ball game. And you know it's a funny thing last year all season long Dallas gave up only two fourth down conversions. The opponents were two of seven on that drive. Washington converted a fourth and two and a fourth and 15 right here. And this is a big one. We see Santana Moss here, the outside guy. Now we're going to also get a post here, and Roy Williams reacts to this post, then has to turn and doesn't get back to the Santana Moss post. But watch Roy Williams here. You see, he sees that inside post right there. He turns. Now when he turns his shoulder, that allows Santana Moss to get in behind him and Mark Brunel to throw the ball over him. So they got Moss for the big play and he's turned in a couple of them tonight. He's caught four for 89 yards. That kept him in the game. Nick Novak who did his college kicking at Maryland and was in the Cowboy camp briefly and replaces John Hall at least temporarily with that kickoff there that is brought back up to the 31 yard line by Tyson Thompson. You know, it's going to be interesting right now to see if the Redskins uh, start to pressure Bledsoe. You know, you know, because they, I think early, as I said, they, they came out and they were going to blitz. Bledsoe got rid of the ball. He was able to throw the ball. They gashed him with the run a couple of times. So then the Redskins laid off with the blitz. It'll be interesting to see if they come back with it now. An interesting play calling here because they're averaging only 2.9 yards a rush, and Bledsoe's going to go to the air. And that pass is incomplete, intended for Keyshawn Johnson. Two timeouts plus the two minute warning left for Washington. You would think that we you know the way Parcells has played through the years. He loves to play clock ball. He's had the running game. But tonight, that Washington defense has stymied Dallas. You've got Jones carrying 19 times for 65 yards, only 2.9 per rush tonight for Dallas. And Keyshawn was upset on that one because he was wide open now. On a Bill Parcells team, we're talking about things to do. Second and ten is a running down. Tis true again, and an effective running down as it's a an eight-yard pickup, and then Wall Harris got him up high. Jones is going to contend. He also grabbed the face mask. The crowd wanted a flag. There was a flag. I think the official agrees face with the crowd. Mask. They do. Five yards, number twenty-seven. We'll add five yards to the end of the run. The result of the five yards is the first down. Would have been a third and two, and now it's a first down and more time off the clock. You know it's impressive, Al. Watch, watch Julius Jones as he as he slides here to stay in bound. You know when you have the lead and you get you know in the last three minutes or so. You want to stay in bounds all the time. You never want to go out of bounds. You don't want to stop the clock. Absolutely. I think he saw that he was going out of bounds and he just went into a slide. 34 yard line, it's first down. After the penalty, 13 7 Cowboys, three and a half to go. Johnson in motion. Gain of a yard and a half, maybe two on the 21st carry of the night for 75 yards for Jones. And Washington is going to take a timeout right here. And that is their second. So Gibbs is going to use his timeouts early and force the issue. Well, Roy Williams has hit like Roy Jones. But you know, the reason that, that, that Bill Parcells always runs on second and long is so he has a third and manageable. He, he doesn't want to throw an incomplete pass on second and long and then come up with third and long where they can really. You know, throw all their blitzes at you. Second down and eight now from the 46 yard line. They have nine in the box, and Bledsoe's going to go to the air. And Bledsoe hit as he throws, and that's thrown into the bench. And so that's perfect for Washington's defense. Ronaldo win. 
put the pressure on because they took the timeout. They're not compelled to use another timeout. They still have one. They still have the two minute warning and now it's third down and eight for Dallas. Yeah, I'm surprised that Sean Payton called a called a pass on that play because now they get that third and long situation. And this is where Greg Williams really likes to bring the heat. So any play that that Sean Payton calls here you better be able to pick up blitzes. There is Greg Williams, head coach of Buffalo before that defensive coordinator for Jeff Fisher of Tennessee. They walk up the corner. Bledsoe throws to the near side, and the sliding catch is made by Keyshawn Johnson. He has that down to a science. And he has a flag down back at the 38-yard line. The call is going to go against Dallas. Third down. Mm. Yeah, and the Redskins really surprised me on that. They just rushed four men. They had a four defensive linemen, and that's all they brought. And and if you do that, and you and you let them pass protect like this, and give Drew Bledsoe time, I mean, here you have a holding right here. But but if he has time, he is going to be able to do these kinds of things. Now, I didn't, you know, again, he's kind of out of the thing there, but I didn't see Flozell Adams holding him. I didn't either. That's the second call against him tonight. The other one was a dubious call. Wait a minute, Lawrence. Third down and 18. Now, these are Greg Williams blitz type situations, but against the Cowboys and, 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 and Drew Bledsoe from the, from the first couple series on, he hasn't been doing it. In fact, he told someone he was going to blitz like 70 or 80 percent of the time, and he's probably blitzed about five or 10 percent of the time. Subterfuge. I know Bill Parcells expected a lot of it. Drew Bledsoe expected a lot of it. Sean Payton expected a lot of it. This offensive line expected a lot of it. Third down and 18, just outside the 35-yard line. It's a four-man rush. Line does it shot. Whitten makes the catch, but well short of the first down. He's wrapped up first by Walt Harris at about the 49-yard line. So now Dallas is forced to punt. Washington will use its final timeout. So they have almost three minutes, and they get to stop the clock at the two-minute warning, so they have plenty of time. But that was still a big play for the Cowboys because it, it bought them about yards of field position. And the Redskins are going to get the ball, but they're not going to have very good field position. Marcellus keeps going in and out. And they'd like you to be retired before they put you in there. McBriar's punt is too deep. And that will come out to the 20-yard line. So they'll have to go 80 yards in 252. You know, Al, we talked about how the, the fans stayed in their in their seats for the the halftime ceremony of Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin, Emmett Smith. They're also staying in those same seats for the entirety of this game. Washington hasn't won here in nine seasons. And that is caught out in the flat by Clinton Portis. Washington's last win in this park was 1995. And as we said, 14 of the last 15 meetings between these two teams has been won by the Dallas Cowboys. Dan Snyder bought the team in 99, so he has yet to see his team win a game in this stadium. Now, this is when you find out about your offense and defense. I mean, this is what good offense is when you can make plays in this situation. Good defense is when you can stop those plays. From the 30, Brunel going deep for Moss again. He makes the catch, and Santana Moss for a touchdown. Wow. And again, it's Glenn and Williams on the coverage. He beats the same two guys. Unbelievable. He just outran him, and Mark Brunel got it out there. That's what I'm saying. This is offense. This is defense. You can play great defense the whole game, but you have to make a play here. You can play lousy offense the whole game, but you have to make a play here. And the team that makes the play is the team that's going to win. 70 yards to Moss, and so the Redskins go almost two full games without a touchdown, and then they get them back to back, and the extra point will give them the lead. Hey, that's what Joe Gibbs wanted Santana Moss for. He said we didn't have enough big plays. We wanted Santana Moss to make them for him, 
looked in the first half like they weren't going to try. Then they came out here in the second half and he's made a couple of big 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 ones for him. So Parcells is 77 at all mark. On the defense. That five yards will be added. On the kickoff. That's a good penalty so they don't give those guys a free shot on the extra point. Right. It used to be that there was you know a penalty but you wouldn't take it you know in this extra point and a guy would get over the center. You know in, in, in grammar school high school you have no canning the center but there's no no canning the center rule. And Novak bangs one through in his NFL debut. So with 235 remaining in regulation it's now 14 13 and the Cowboys have two timeouts and the two minute warning. But well, Jaron Glenn is number 26 Roy Williams is number 31. We see Santana Moss down here in the right and he is just going to split the two. He's going to run right between Roy Williams and Aaron Glenn. That's what speed does and that's what a good throw does. I mean I mean this is why you say you know, you know when you have a coverage you like to have someone up bumping these guys so you can throw them off stride when a guy like Santana Moss can run that's just like running a hundred yard dash in a track meet. I mean, he's just running straight through. No one, no one reroutes him. No one does anything to him. He just runs right through and past and beyond your defense. What a play by Mark Brunel and Santana Moss. Two of them for Jerry Jones. He can't believe what he's just seen. His team on the verge of pitching a shutout, and now they're down by a point. You know, in the Redskins just kind of hung in there. You know, I mean that they weren't doing anything offensively. They weren't being aggressive. They weren't pressuring defensively. But Dallas didn't run away with a spoon either. You know, so it was still there for them to take it. The Cowboys left them there, and the Redskins just hung in and kept going and going and going. Now it's a Cowboys chance. Novak ready to kick off. So on this night when the crowd and they're always into the Redskins and the Cowboys and they had so much going for them tonight with the triplets enshrined at halftime. It looked like they were going to go two and oh had things in hand and all of a sudden in a dogfight down by one Tyson Thompson is back to return the kick. Novak sends it skyward. It comes down to the two yard line. This is the rookie Tyson Thompson. A pass the 20, that big burst of speed, and Novak, the kicker, makes the tackle at midfield. Boy, we knew that he was impressive because he has speed. He has great speed. And he did this thing the right way. He just takes it right up into his wedge. Versus wedge makes a little move right there and then uses the speed. If he wasn't that close to the sideline, that could have been a touchdown. But because kickers aren't great tacklers, but when they have the sideline like this to help them, they can get a guy out of bounds. Just make contact. 49-yard kickoff return. Taylor Jacobs is hurt. It's the reason for the stoppage on the field. Playing on special teams. They're number four wide receiver. So the Cowboys will have the ball when play resumes at the 48. They needed a play from Tyson Thompson and he gave it to him because this is great field position here for the Cowboys. This is something the Redskins go like 55 minutes and don't score a point. Then in two minutes they score 14 points. Amazing game over. And not only that because I mean it just it was so dink and dunk tonight and they couldn't get anything going and the offense lacked imagination and you thought that the skins would go all season without scoring a touchdown. I mean, it had that feel. Ozell Adams was like a pound the other day he was like a pound under 340. I bet he'll be under 330 right now. But right now the Cowboys have it at the 48 yard line after Jacobs is able to walk off the field under his own power. Two time match plus the two minute warning. With 228 to go. They'll start with Jones. Jones knifing over the right side, takes the ball to the 42 yard line. You know, now the now the Cowboys are thinking field goal position here too. I mean, I think that's the first thing. You have two goals, 
one is first get in field goal position and then your second goal of course is to score a touchdown. Jose Cortez is the kicker. Kicking down in the two minute warning to go without a huddle on second down and four. Retro stepping up to avoid the pressure. Goes to the outside for Witt and that is incomplete. And that will take us to the two minute warning with 157 to play. I think if you if you pass in this situation and you're the Cowboys I think you're thinking of a possession type pass and that would be either Jason Witten or Keyshawn Johnson. If they fought on that second down they would have gone to Keyshawn. You know or do you or do you go to a run I mean run the ball to Julius Jones you know and get a, a, a fourth and short because you're in a, a two down set here. Third down and four. This isn't going to be a run. No, nope, out of the shotgun. Ooh, look down here. There was no one covering Keyshawn down here in the bottom of the screen. Now he finds a defender on him. This is going to look the other way. And Creighton, does he make the catch? He got popped. No. Sean Taylor dislodged the football. I'll say. Incomplete fourth down. Sean Taylor, the safety, whacked him. Sean Taylor really came up on that one. You're going to see Patrick Creighton. He's the he's the middle receiver. He's right in this group here, and you see he comes under control to catch that hook. And Sean Taylor, the safety, just comes up and unloads him. Oh man! Wow. You talk about launching. He launched Creighton halfway back to where he came from. So now it's fourth and four at the 42-yard line. This down can be the game. Let's our throws, and they will not convert. And now Dallas. Will have to take its timeouts on defense. That tackle is made by Harris. Terry Glenn made the catch. 148. They have one timeout. Can't quite run the clock out, but come close. That's the thing. You know, I always say on third down that you have to run your pattern beyond the first down mark. Now watch Terry Glenn there compared to the yellow line. You see, he's on this side of the yellow line. You have to, I mean, they don't know where the yellow line is, but that first down marker, you have to get up over that on third down, I think, but on fourth down, I know you have to. You're compelled to. They can't. They can stop the clock twice. They can stop it two times, so they are going to get the ball back if they don't give up a first down. 39-yard line. They're going to give it to Clinton Portis. And he's going to get tackled up at the 40 three yard line and that's the first of their two remaining timeouts one to go the Redskins offense nothing through the first three and a half quarters tonight and then those two big bombs and of course those two fourth down conversions and one of the plays of course was the the 25 yard run by Brunel on and, third down. And the other thing that impressed me is how calm Joe Gibbs has been. You know, you know, I said that, you know, nothing was going right for him. I mean, he couldn't run the ball, he couldn't throw the ball. They were kind of moving on him, and then boom, he just kind of hung in there. Brought that up before Parcel 77 and 0, and he led by 13 or more points any time during the fourth quarter. In jeopardy right now, second down and six from the 43-yard line. And here's Portis, and he's going to get wrapped up at the 45-yard line, and that's Dallas's final timeout. So now they're in a situation where if Washington gets a first down, the game is over. If they don't, they're going to have to punt, and Dallas will get the ball back with no timeouts. And I think that this is one of the things that you would like to say, you know, a bootleg would be good here, some kind of play-action pass. But you don't want to stop the clock. So therefore, if you're the Redskins, you almost have to run the ball. Bill Parcells, and we mentioned it before talking when we saw him in August and yesterday as well about how, you know, the wins are nice, but the losses are worse than ever. And this one would go down as, as, as one of the all timers because, as we say, he's never been in this position to blow that sort of a lead in the fourth quarter and you know they were they looked like they had the game under control just about the whole game but the yes, only thing is they down. weren't getting the points you know you go back to the beginning of the game, they miss a field goal they have to settle for a field goal you know that when they had their opportunities they didn't put enough points up squandered chances here's your ball game right here for Dallas if Washington gets a first down it's over 
And Portis will not get it. So the Cowboys are going to get the ball back with under a minute after the punt. And Groom will come in to kick, and this will be Groom's eighth punt of the night. Jerry's on the field. Did you see that play? That's an old Joe Gibbs play. That was a counter trade. You know, he needed to play. He had to get a first down. So he went back to what he knows best. And watch this. The counter, you see the two pulling here. Portis counters to the left and tries to follow in there to the right. The Cowboys probably play that as well as anyone. And it was countered. And now the Redskins will run the clock all the way down. They might even take a delay a game at this point. With a punt from near midfield. And they will. So they eat up all of the time they can, which takes us down to 50 seconds. And Groom will be punting when play resumes to Creighton. Right, and the clock will start again at the snap of the ball, and then it, it will it will stop with the end of the punt return, change of possession. Last year the Redskins thought they had the game won here, and the Cowboys on a pass to Creighton came from behind to win it at the end. Now Creighton will have another opportunity to make a big impact as he'll run back this punt. Clock starts now. And it's a short end over end kick, bouncing at the 25, and it takes a pretty good bounce for Dallas. Well, it's, it's a good bounce for the Redskins. The, the clock's still right. going. But the clock is still going, and the one thing about Dallas is that that took 14 seconds total off the clock. So Washington in no hurry to down it. And now Drew Bledsoe will start from the 21 yard line and try to get Cortez into position for a game winning field goal. And again you're not going to do that in one play so Sean Payton calling the plays Drew Bledsoe throw it and you have to kind of think in terms of you know a couple of 20 yard passes as compared to one 70 yard pass. Out of a shotgun for Drew Bledsoe. Skins by one. 36 seconds no timeouts. Four man rush to the outside. Complete and short. Intended for Glenn. Drew Bledsoe in this fourth quarter has thrown a couple of uh, hoppers in there, hasn't he? That one was short, like you said. Remember earlier, he had Keyshawn Johnson down here for a a uh, first down, and he threw the ball into the ground. Well, I guess that you know heat can. You know, we talked about heat taking a toll on linemen and pass rushers and that, but it can also probably take a toll on quarterbacks. Honest. Second down and 10. Bledsoe is 19 of 31 for 225 yards. Rushing five this time. And that is juggled and not caught on the Redskins side as Keyshawn Johnson can't handle it. Matt Bowen playing in place of the injured Pearson Prelo with the coverage. It'll be third down. Now this is the thing that Keyshawn can do so well is is use his body again to shield but he just needed a little more room he was too close to the sideline and he never was able to keep control had he run that say from a slaughter or inside the numbers he would have had a chance at that one. So it's third and ten still at the twenty one yard line still in the shotgun and it's a low snap let's picking it up buys time throws. Converts up at the 42 yard line. Now they got to get up there and down it. Witt make or Glenn makes the catch. Now Bledsoe's going to have to spike the ball. Clock running 12 seconds and he spikes it right here. So you have 10 seconds to try to get into field goal range and have the clock stop as well. How about that composure by Drew Bledsoe? I mean, he wow. fumbled that snap and then, then he was able to get the ball under control, look up field, find his guy, and get it to him. 52 yards the career long for Cortez well out of range right now and the clock is the arch enemy going to pick up a lot of yardage and get it out of bounds and Bledsoe's going to swing it and that's incomplete intended for Patrick Creighton and now you're down to one last play barring a pass interference call which could also set up a field goal. Right, and the and the game can't end on a on a defensive penalty. Jerry Jones is saying we need something here. You have one play, and like you say, we're not talking about position anymore. We're not talking about field goal range anymore. 
Uh, you have to score a touchdown. Third down and ten. The Redskins have three guys all the way back at their own 20 yard line. And they'll throw it underneath, and it's Jones, and he'll lateral the ball to Glenn. And Glenn will look to lateral it, but can't. And that's the way the ball game will end. And I'll tell you, we have seen some improbable wins through the years. This was only a 13 0 game, but this would rank right up there in terms of improbability. And for Jerry Jones and for Bill Parcells, that's about as bitter as it gets. The Redskins have lost 14 out of 15. And Joe Gibbs came in here and it looked like everything was against him. In fact, he told me last night, he said that they're treating us like we're a homecoming team. You know, they have the, you know, the triplets going into the ring of honor and they bring us in here to, to beat us on that night. But they sure hung in there, didn't they? Boy, did they ever. Oh! <laughs> And that, that that feels really good on a night when it's still in the 90s. Yeah, because there was no shiver or anything on that one. Was that that was like you say that was complete enjoyment. This NFL Films production has been brought to you by NFL Network. Watch the National Football League 24 hours a day on NFL Network.